Hello friends, another day, another new ControlNet update. Today we'll be looking at the new in-painting model for ControlNet. And I gotta tell you, like every new ControlNet update, it's pretty cool. By the way, did you know that if your dog gets a fever, you're supposed to give them ketchup? Apparently it's perfect for fixing a hot dog. First off, let's make sure that our ControlNet is the latest version. So let's go into extensions, click the little box here, check for updates. And then as soon as this is loaded, we'll see if our ControlNet needs updating. And here we can see new commits to control it. So we're just gonna press apply and restart UI. And now control it is being updated and installed. Now, if you don't have the in-painting model, you're gonna download that from the link in the video description. You're gonna press the in-paint PTH here, download that as well as the YAML. Then place them in your stable fusion folder inside extensions, control net, and then inside models. Here, you're just gonna drop them in. Whenever that's done and you updated your control net, if you didn't restart and you don't see the model here, you can just press the refresh button here. Now you can either select from pre-presser or model down here, or you can select the new button here in paint. So now we have the in paint preprocessor and the in paint model. Now the in paint model isn't new by itself, but the control and support for it has been updated a little bit. So we can do some very cool stuff with it. So first let's find a pseudo image. And I prepared an image that looks like this. This is a scene from a Nordic fjord. So we're just gonna drop that into control net and we're gonna enable, press pixel perfect. Since this is a 1024 by 1024 image, we're gonna change the resolution here as well to 1024 by 1024. 24. And then we're going to draw our mask here. So let's change the image here, see what we can get. So let's change this part here. There we go, painting that in. But we're not going to do anything with the prompt for now. So let's see what happens. We're changing control mode to control and it is more important. We're not really using a prompt, so that's why we're switching this. I'm changing the sampling method to DPM++ to Mkaris. This isn't super important, I just uh, prefer that one for now. Changing to two images and uh, let's see what we get. I'm currently using the deliberate model and we are not using any prompt for this. As you can see here, it fades in and adapts to what was around. Now we'll get different renders each time, but it will read from the image and uh, try to paint that in, in a similar way that uh, generative field for, for Photoshop does. Now the cool part about this and what's different from regular in painting is that in in regular in painting you really have you have two options. You have original which will remember what's below the image, the, the colors and, and just work with that. And then you also have latent noise which will create something new in the in painting area, but it will not fully read from the image like control it does. So here we have two examples with two different kinds of, of uh, generations, but kind of blended the sky together nicely as well as the mountain range in the background. You can see some a little blur in the water here. So it's not perfect as of yet, but I think still very cool. Let's see if we can improve this by using an in-painting model. So I'm gonna pick realistic vision in painting here, and then we're gonna render two new ones. And we can see the merge going on here. Let's see where we end up with the end result. So looking at these, I'd say, well, a little bit better. Not perfect, but this one's pretty cool. The colors have merged very good with, with, with the lower part here. Now, since this is a landscape, this would actually have these colors not as vivid. And, you know, this part is just weird. But uh, just image-wise from, from uh, ControlNet in-painting, I think it did a, did a very good job, especially on an image that is uh, as hard as this one. Let's try something else. Let's try a portrait. Each summer, I try to learn something new. I've been delving into 3D printing, woodworking, and uh, this time around, it's coffee. That's why I'm happy to say that Skillshare is the sponsor of this video and they hooked me up with some free classes. So I've been checking out how to make a really good cup of coffee. Whatever your passion, Skillshare is your go-to for expanding your knowledge and skills and has been my trusty partner for my caffeinated adventure. If you follow the link in the video description below, the first thousand people will get one month of Skillshare and it's 100% free. Just join up for a month Cancel after that? No problem. Just test it out. I'm not going to ask you to buy anything, but uh, 
feel free to try it. It's actually pretty good. Except the coffee and some food classes I've been checking out on the side. I'm going to check out some career-wise one as well. I was thinking of doing some uh, time management classes and maybe some sound and music ones to improve on my channel. The cool part about it is you can set it up however you want. And if you're a freelancer or running your own business, you already understand how important it is to be your own boss. With Skillshare, you get access to thousands of inspiring classes taught by seasoned professionals. I just started out with the small stuff. I didn't feel like I had time to take lots of long classes. So I did some two, three minute parts when, when I had a break. It was nice having no pressure to do anything. So uh, check out that free month in the link below. By the way, I got a dad joke for you. Where do you learn to make ice cream? Sunday school and Skillshare. So I have an image of a woman here. So let's drag this one straight in. Dropping that in there. And we're changing the resolution here a little bit because this is a big one, 1472 by 816. Weird resolution, eh? It's supposed to be a 16 by nine, but uh, this is actually, don't tell anyone, but it's actually an image from Mid Journey. And um, they tend to mess up the resolution a little bit. Let's just uh, repaint. Well, let's go with the whole left side here. So we'll have part of her hair and the background, part of her back. Add some of the top hair as well. There we go. That should be it. And we are generating. And we are again using the realistic vision in painting model this time. So after crashing, I had to generate again. And neither of my images with the in painting model here turned out very well. They're actually kind of too blurry here. I mean, the background meh, can be blurry, but uh, let's try with a deliberate one and see if that helps a little bit. We are generating again. So now it actually added a woman here to the left and it did in both of uh, our images probably because the model skews heavily towards that. But I think the results are pretty good. I mean, the hair is similar in both of them. And while the right side here is a little more out of focus than, than the left, I think it's a good fill just based out of nothing with no prompt at all. Now, obviously the hands here are a mess. No one could say that, right? Maybe one day man can dream, man can dream. In this image, we don't have any hands, so... Um, it's pretty all right. And here we also have a little better blur on, on the hair here that we can see on the right side. So I think that's pretty cool. Just an amazing feature. So let's try with a smaller area here. Let's say that you have, let's say you have just a blemish. So you want to fix something in image. You might have, um, let's say this nose here. She has a little bling in the nose. So let's see if we can't get rid of that. So drop in a big old clown nose on there. And uh, let's generate two new ones with again no prompt and the deliberate model so now it should read from the image it should understand that it's a face and just add a regular old nose that fits well with that face and looking at the results there i would say they're okay ish now the nose is a little too red you can see where it's been um, put in this one's probably better I think running a couple of generations would fix this, but uh, just looking at how powerful this is, reading from the image and, and just adding stuff. This, uh, again, control that. I love it. It's fantastic. All right, so I have another example here. We're going to take this woman here, waving with the six fingers. I kind of like what's going on in the picture, but uh, let's try and change it a little bit. I'm just going to remove the previous one here, drop that in, and we're painting... Let's say we feel that these trees here on the right, that's not something that we want. So let's try and get something else in there. We can have some shrubbery down here. According to Monty Python, shrubberies are pretty good. We're changing the resolution to what we have in this image. And let's run to here with the deliberate model. And now we're getting some more space here around her. So we get some more focus on the woman in the composition. I think that frames her a little better in the image. And looking at our results here, I think they're pretty good. Now, uh, compared to the first one we did with the fjord, I'd say this is much better. You can hardly see where the change appears. In the fjord, we had the issue with the water and you could clearly see what's going on. Now with so much detail in the image, I can't spot it. I wouldn't be able to see where this has been changed. Maybe you have there, you might have a line here. You can see there's a little 
more red in this mountain range and there's this one is a little colder and um, yeah probably a little bit of the same in that image but i think that's about it very cool i like it i hope you liked it too like and subscribe if you wanna i'm not your boss do whatever you want i'll see you in the next video have a good one see ya